The idea that spending money on Christmas does not assist the economy is one that should come as no surprise. No matter when it takes place, spending is always beneficial to the economy. In addition, if you do not spend your money on Christmas at the end of the year, you will most likely end up spending it on something else at some point in the future. Therefore, Christmas only serves to concentrate the majority of our spending toward the end of the year. Aside from that, the amount of money spent on Christmas is merely a barometer of the state of our economy rather than the root cause of it. It is a robust economy that leads to increased Christmas spending by providing us with additional money that we can spend rather than the other way around. So here in this video, we will talk about, the video is going to be very interesting, so make sure you stick till end. Before we continue to our video, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to never miss any of our future uploads. Now let's get started. A social obligation to buy Christmas gifts may, of course, force people to spend more money overall by driving them to spend money that they do not now own. This causes people to spend more money than they actually have. But exactly how does something like that have any beneficial implications? It is possible that in the short term it will result in gains. However, in the long term all it does is inflate the credit bubble. And the higher the chance that the bubble will explode, the longer it is allowed to continue growing. It is possible that this will have a beneficial impact on our GDP. In the absence of a compulsion to purchase Christmas presents for others, some individuals may prefer to make financial investments with their money, increase the amount of money they have saved, or pay an additional amount toward their mortgage. Rather than shopping in traditional stores, you might do your shopping here instead. But just in what way does that make things more difficult? There's no question that this would have a detrimental effect on retail sales in the short term, nevertheless. Setting aside money for savings does not remove that money from circulation. Investing capital is essential to the success of any growing business. When a bank has a bigger amount of money saved by its customers and received from consumers as payments on mortgages, the bank is in a better position to lend that money to new firms and businesses that are expanding. In addition to this, the quantity of debt that a family carries have a direct bearing on the family's ability to make purchases. There is not the slightest bit of inconsistency to be found in what is referred to as the paradox of thrift. It is a general reflection of the fact that the cost of transporting goods from China to the United States has decreased as a result of the redirection of a large number of ships to that route in order to capitalize on the high prices. This change came about as a direct result of the high demand for Chinese goods in the United States. In most situations, the expense of traveling via alternative routes, such as China to Europe or Europe to the Americas, is continuing to climb. For many people, the Christmas season is a time of happiness, but for others, it may be a time of stress owing to the expectations of gift giving and making purchases for family and friends during this time of year. According to David Kyle Johnson, the conventional wisdom that Christmas is good for the economy is mistaken, and seasonal spending actually makes the economy worse by inflating the credit bubble and generating wasteful spending. This is what Johnson means when he says that Christmas is bad for the economy. It is his contention that this is as a result of the fact that seasonal expenditure results in an increased amount of frivolous spending. He argues that rather than wasting money on frivolous purchases, it would be more prudent and American for individuals to put their funds into savings or investments in order to promote economic growth. A good number of us are keeping our feelings of animosity for the holiday season hidden from others. By far the most prevalent responsibility is to purchase presents for the recipient. This situation is very similar to having the Sword of Damocles hanging over our heads. Fear grips us on Black Friday since we are aware that the shopping situation will undoubtedly be chaotic on that day. When we go shopping for someone and come up empty-handed because we have no idea what to give them or because they already have more than they require, it is the worst feeling in the world. In the meantime, we can expect inflation to rise as importers pass on the cost of shipping to customers. Given that governments and central bankers were already worried about rising inflation for various other reasons, they could do without this extra dimension. In addition, according to the economist Joel Waldfogel's explanation in his book, the expenditures that are associated with Christmas result in a loss of dead weight. There is a difference of around $12 billion between the amount of money spent on presents by consumers and the value placed on those items by the recipients. That amount of money represents more money that has been wasted than the total amount that the government has spent on pork barrel projects. And while things like our infrastructure continue to deteriorate, we are wasting that money attempting to prop up industries that aren't vital, like electronic entertainment. This is a wasteful use of resources. 
It is not meant to imply that spending money on Christmas cannot be useful for our economy. Despite this, we will need to educate ourselves on the ways in which gifts might provide economic value and alter our behaviors in accordance with this new knowledge. In a book titled The Myths That Stole Christmas, writer says, I give a number of potential answers, but continuing business as usual is not going to be an option that is satisfactory. If it appears that the problem with shipping rates will continue for some time, then it is also possible that it will add to discussions in boardrooms about whether or not it is sensible to rely so much on China as the industrial hub of the globe. There is a lot of talk about globalization giving way to regionalization, and since ties between China and the West are already at an all-time low, many individuals are already arguing that they should develop more consumer goods closer to home. This practice is known in the business as nearshoring. But in the luxurious seaside resort of Batroud, which is located in the north of the country, it is impossible to see the current economic woes that Lebanon is going through. It only recently opened its very first Christmas market, which organizer Francois Barraket says could one day compete with those that are staged in Europe. The market was only recently inaugurated. The information that he provided to a newspaper in Dubai known as the National suggests that it has attracted wealthy people from the country of Lebanon. According to Dani Akolalek Kadab, those Lebanese who currently have financial stability are either employed by international organizations or receive aid in the form of hard currency from family members who live outside of Lebanon. Others may have had the good fortune to withdraw some United States cash from the bank before the authorities froze all accounts that contained dollars in the currency's holdings. In addition, a significant number of Lebanese residents now residing in other countries will return to Lebanon in order to celebrate the holiday with their respective families. You will see a lot of people celebrating Christmas, since a lot of people from other locations are going to be traveling in for the holiday. Despite this, one should not draw the conclusion that people's circumstances have improved. This is an ongoing issue in Lebanon as a direct result of the large number of people working outside the country who move into and out of the country. If we did not have this influx of hard currency from outside sources into the country, the proverbial phrase dog eat dog would be an accurate description of the situation in Lebanon. It would be far more serious in that regard Kadab issued a warning. What does this mean for Christmas advertising? People are opting for lesser brand names, cutting back on their spending on non-essential products, and deferring the purchase of more expensive items. What exactly does this imply for different brands? The cost of doing business is rising, which means that significant price cuts and promotions will be increasingly more expensive for companies. As a result, brands ought to seek for ways to emphasize value and keep consumers aware of their products. And as John Harper, the leader of brand health tracking at Ipsos, points out, for larger transactions that may be postponed, customers need to be informed of their options periodically, and preserving the longer-term brand building impacts of advertising are extremely crucial here. Given the current climate, the advertisements for Christmas this year will need to convey a sense of self-assurance, expertise, and compassion. These are the three characteristics that Alina Thorne and Firkin, who is the head of creative excellence for Ipsos in the UK, describes as exactly the sorts of sentiments that Ipsos has seen developing as the key demands of individuals in a moment of crisis. She makes the following observation on the state of the public sentiment this Christmas, advertisements need originality and empathy, in line with people's wants, desires, and values, and sometimes that might mean having a chuckle. Ipsos has been doing research on Christmas advertisements using its Creative Spark tool for the previous two years in order to determine which characteristics are the most significant. Do we really need all of the Christmas cliches, or are you able to offer a fresh perspective on Christmas? Yes, a fresh perspective on Christmas is feasible. Nevertheless, it must make some kind of reference to the familiar and the customary aspects that have been developed over the course of years of association and brand building. In practice, this means that current images of modern families and the lives they live today should continue to include elements such as snow, jingle bells, and other connotations that evoke warm and fuzzy feelings. One of the main reasons immigrants and migrants send money home is for the holiday season. It is critical for remittance senders to be able to support those closest to them by assisting in making Christmas a reality for their loved. Once it's because of the high cost of desirable seasonal products, food, and the overall impact COVID has had on supply chain and inflation. Making sure loved ones can appropriately commemorate the sentimental and significant time is frequently top of mind for the almost 250 million people who reside in various nations from their relatives. As a result, preparing for the holiday season can take months of financial planning and a team effort from family members. 
both at home and abroad, to make this season a success. And here is final question that. What would be your approach be this Christmas considering the economic crisis at hand? Let us tell in the comment section. Hope you guys enjoyed our video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more videos. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.